let this be a normal field trip? With a friend? No way! Cruising on that main street, you're relaxed and feeling good. Next thing that you know, you'll see. Octopus in the neighborhood. Something's missing. But, Tim, when it comes to deserts, we've got everything under the sun. Sorry, DA. It just doesn't say desert yet. Are you kidding? It screams desert. We've got sand. We've got gravel. We've got desert plants like cacti, creosote bushes, aquatillo. We've got the desert's harsh conditions. Hot, blazing sun. Dry, blinding dust storm. Tim's right. There's something missing. Them bones and bones and dry bones and bones and bones and dry bones and bones and bones and dry bones. As I always say, Arnold, it never hurts to be prepared. That's funny, Ms. Frizzle. That's exactly what I was thinking. I know, I know. Desert animals. That's what's missing. Ms. Frizzle, a diorama will never be complete without desert animals. <gasps> Dynamic deduction, Phoebe. Huh? Well, these should do for now. Now? It's later I'm worried about. Thank you, Ms. Frizzle. Here you go, little guy. According to my research, that's a kangaroo rat. And that's a Gila monster. Isn't it cute? Only Phoebe would think a Gila monster is cute. And there's more. Tortoise, beetle, scorpion, jackrabbit, roadrunner. Whoa, Liz, what's up with you? And do you know what this is? A baby coyote. <laughs> Phoebe, are you sure all these animals live in the desert? Think about it. The desert is really hot. The sun beats down all day long. Feet, feet, feet. And there's nowhere for the animals to go to escape the heat. Heat, heat. But not only is it hot, but there's hardly any food in the desert. So any animal that shows its face gets eaten by a bigger one. <laughs> huh? Stop! And that's not all. There's almost no water in the desert. <gasps> no water? Uh-huh. No shelter, no food, no water. In no time at all, all your cute little animals are buzzard bait. <gasps> Scarcity is the name of the game, Phoebes. Scarcity. He's right, Phoebe. There's not much food, water, or shelter in the desert. We've got to do something. Yeah. What can we do? What can we do? What can we do? Well, at my own school, we take a stand, form a committee. Go on a field trip? Arnold, are you serious? He's right. Sads to the rescue. Sads? Students against desert scarcity. To the desert. Miss Frizzle? Yes, Arnold. For once, I'm prepared. Regulation Desert. As outlined in Chapter 7 of my new field trip survival guide. Ms. Frizzle, do your worst. I'll do my best, Arnold. Well, are you guys coming? Or do I have to save these desert animals all by myself? To the bus! Follow that Phoebe! So 
gun glove, snake bite kit, a few desert mallow blasters. What? No football? Carlos, we are not going to the desert to have fun. We're not? The desert is full of surprises, Phoebe. And this bus is so slow. Can't we go any faster, Miss Frizzle? Every second we waste means those poor little animals are out there suffering. Well, that's one way of looking at it, Phoebe. Okay, bus, do your stuff. Chill, Phoebe. We only just took off. We're flying over mountains. Didn't you say students against desert scarcity? Yeah, and the mountains have plenty of shelter, food, and water. Miss Frizzle, we must be going the wrong way. The wrong way? Why, Phoebe, if it weren't for these mountains, there wouldn't even be a desert. What do mountains have to do with the desert? Haven't you guys ever heard of a rain shadow? No. no. Some deserts are made by what's called the rain shadow effect. When warm, moist air rises over the mountains, its water vapor condenses into rain or snow. The mountains catch all the moisture, so the air reaching the other side is dry as a desert. Look out below! It's not fair. Why should the mountains get all the water? If you keep asking questions, Phoebe, you'll find an answer. Oh, and there's the perfect parking spot. Hold on tight! Huh? Whoa! Field trip tip number 63. In the event of a rapid loss of altitude, you may want to put on a parachute. Liz, my parachute? That's not a parachute! That's a pair of shoes! Probe reads 107 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hot. How can anything live here? Um, is it just me, or does this look like the final field trip? Come along, class. We're here to experience the desert. Take chances, make mistakes, get dusty. Field trip tip number 87. Not a problem. Come on, you guys. Students against desert scarcity. Remember, we've got work to do. Desert scarcity? What about dessert scarcity? I'm hungry. Hey, Arnold, where are those mallow blasters? I'm afraid they've melted. How can you even think about eating when all those poor little animals are suffering from hunger? The only poor little animals I see are us. There's one. Why, that's a collared lizard. And that's a funny-looking bird. That Keisha is a fine example of a hungry roadrunner chasing a mm, 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 delicious lizard to eat. Come on, we have to protect that lizard. Huh? At my old school, lizards never ran on their hind legs. Quick, everyone, back in the bus, Phoebe. What are we doing? How would you like to be a lizard being chased by a hungry roadrunner? Ooh, a situation worth exploration, Phoebe. Wow, cool! We're a Gila monster! As I always say, when the going gets hungry, the hungry get going! Bad, oh, bad, oh, bad, bad, bad. And getting worse, it's getting on us. I hate field trips where we get eaten. Do I hear a suggestion to avoid digestion? Hmm? According to my research, 
Arnold. It means we ought to become something that's not very appetizing. Ah! On the button, D.A. One inedible horn lizard coming up. Phew! Close one. <laughs> Would you? So, the little animals here have special ways to avoid getting eaten, like running fast or being prickly. Oh, Phoebe, that's right. Which means they don't need your help, Phoebes. Are you sure about that? Life is tough in the desert. Don't we know it? It's too hot to chase after animals. Or to be chased. Phew, I'm burning up. Exactly. And somewhere out there is a poor little animal which is burning up too. Now come on, we've got to find it and help it. Stop the bus. Please. Everybody out! Not, Not again. again! Single file class. I'm tired. I'm hungry. I'm prepared. <coughs> Phoebe, we've been looking and looking and we haven't found any more animals. None, Phoebe, and I'm burning up. Me too. You're <coughs> hot. Um, uh, uh, what about that poor little jackrabbit? See, it's sitting there with the sun beating down on its head. And it's wearing a fur coat. Field trip tip number 158. When the sun is beating down on your head, put on a hat. Got that covered? Thanks, Arnold. Hey! Here, little jackrabbit. This will keep you from getting too hot. A nice hat to shade your... Phoebe! Arnold! Now, how will that jackrabbit keep cool? Well... Ear conditioning, Phoebe. Ear conditioning. Good one, Miss Frizzle. Why, thank you, Carlos. Carlos! How can you joke at a time like this? According to my research, it's not a joke, Phoebe. You know how a car radiator cools off hot water from the engine? Some desert animals have big ears, which do the same thing. When their warm blood moves through their big ears, it gets cooled off in the same way. Stay cool! Come on, Phoebes. Just admit it. The lizards don't need your help, and neither do the jackrabbits. Okay, so the jackrabbit has a way of keeping itself cool. But what about that? Oh, that is a desert tortoise. Hmm, you don't usually see them out in the heat like this. See? An animal in need. Come on! We've got to help it. We... we do? Carlos, don't be so selfish. How would you like to be a tortoise roasting in the hot desert sun? I wish you hadn't said that. Ooh, as I always say, there's more than one way to beat the heat. Oh, no! Oh, so this is what it's like to be a desert tortoise. Where are we? In a tortoise burrow, an underground shelter. It's a lot cooler down here. Ah, good observation, Keisha. Yes, another animal that can keep cool without your help, Fibolino. But Carlos, I just thought of something. Maybe the reason we didn't see any animals is because they all burned up before we got here. I knew it. We're too late. Whoa! What's happening? Oh, class. The bus is now an automatic turtle. We're being pushed by another desert tortoise. Sweet. 11, 12, 13, 14. Hey, we weren't 
too late. The reason we didn't see any animals is because they were just waiting for the sun to go down. 50 degrees Fahrenheit. You don't have any sweaters in that knapsack, do you, Arnold? Once the sun goes down, the air cools off. Field trip tip number 257. To beat the heat, do like most desert animals. Come out only at night. There you have it, Phoebe. Another way desert animals help themselves. It's okay, Phoebe. There's nothing wrong with being wrong. As I always say, make mistakes, make mistakes, make mistakes. It's the best way to learn something. But let's face it, Students Against Desert Scarcity is a bust. Okay, Carlos, okay. You don't have to rub it in. I might have made a mistake about that lizard. And I might have made a mistake about that jackrabbit. And I even might have made a mistake about the tortoise. But there's one thing I know I'm not wrong about. How much you wish you stayed home today? No, how much everything in the desert needs water. You're telling me. <coughs> Thanks, Phoebe. Phoebe! Well, if no one's going to help me give water to all these poor little animals, I'll just do it myself. Phoebe, where are you going? I said I was going to give these poor animals water, and I'm going to do Phoebe, I know this may sound crazy, but hear me out. Okay, Carlos, I'm listening. These animals didn't need your protection from being eaten or from burning up in the sun, right? Right. They can cope, right? Right. Well, maybe they don't need your water either. Carlos, how can you say that? You know there's no water in the desert. You said so yourself. Rain shatter, remember? But look at them. They couldn't live without water, and they are definitely alive. They must get it somehow. Okay, then. If you're so smart, tell me how. Come on, Carlos. Take chances. Get messy. Make mistakes. I... I don't know. Exactly. Maybe people like me come out here and give these animals water. Maybe people like me keep these animals alive. Hey, at least save the water for the animals. What are you talking about? Didn't you just splash me? Is that rain? <laughs> Everyone back on the bus. Rain? In the desert? It doesn't rain here very often, class, but... As I always say, not very often is a long way from never. And the desert is a long way from needing my water. And we're a long way from the bus. Come on, Phoebe. Doesn't it feel great? Now we're talking water. It's amazing. We went from absolutely no water to... Come on in and don't be shy. Come on. Just a 
Ralphie. It's going to be a model of the solar system. Neat, huh, Janet? Uh, I hate to tell you, Cousin Arnold, but when my class built one, the sun was so huge we had to hang it from the flagpole. And you had all nine planets? That's right, Keisha. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. My class already studied the solar system. I bet you your class didn't learn about the aliens that live on the planets. For your information, Ralphie, Earth is the only planet that can support life as far as we know. And how far do you know? <laughs> <laughs> really far, because I got straight A's on all my tests, and this proves it. If you already know so much, Janet, why did you come to visit our class? Because Arnold told me all about your field trips, Dorothy Ann. What did he say? That they were, and I quote, highly unusual. And you know what I said? Prove it. She's really nice once you get to know her. Ah, oh, good morning, class. Have you all met Arnold's cousin, Janet? Yes, Miss Frizzle. My teacher doesn't dress like that. That's nothing. Sometimes the frizz looks totally outrageous. Well, since we're lucky enough to have a guest today, I'd say it's a perfect time for a field trip. Hey, cuz, now's your chance to prove it. I wonder where we're going today. Inside a rotten log, been there, to the bottom of the ocean, done that. We're going to the planetarium? Hardly unusual, Arnold. The Frizz taking us on a normal field trip? Believe me, that's unusual. Mm -hmm. How odd. Closed today. Closed? Mm, well, looks like we'll just have to go back to school. Oh, oh no! no. Some field trip, Arnold. You know what? My teacher would have called ahead because my teacher plans ahead. My teacher never makes mistakes. My teacher is a zillion times better than Nobody you. is better than Ms. Frizzle. Oh, yeah? Prove it. Stop the bus! <laughs> Isn't there, you know, someplace else you could take us? You mean another planetarium? Well, sort of, but bigger. Bigger? You know, the big one. Oh, <gasps> Arnold, why didn't I think of that? T minus five and counting. Four, three, two, one, blast! Welcome to Outer Space Class, the only planetarium open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And how are all my astronauts doing? <laughs> <laughs> we're weightless. We're in trouble. No, Arnold, we're in orbit around the Earth. Hmm, let's see now. We are just about there. <gasps> Wonderful. Let the tour begin. <gasps> we're coming up to the sun. Look how huge it is! Class, are you all wearing your special heavy-duty sunblocked 8,000 sun goggles? I wonder how many Earths would fit in the sun. Over a million. Hold on to your goggles! So, class, we've traveled from Earth, around the sun, and now we are on our way to... Mercury, the closest planet to the sun. When I tell my class, they're gonna be so jealous. Wow, we're landing! <laughs> of course. Told you, Janet. We hardly weigh anything compared to my old planet Earth. I wonder if that means there's less gravity pulling on us here. Exactly, Keisha. Good thinking. <laughs> Come along, class. Follow the bouncing lizard. This way, please. 
<laughs> Bet I can jump higher than you, Dorothy Ann. You're on. <laughs> I won first place in my class jumping contest. Here's my blue ribbon to prove it. Wait till I tell my class I won the jumping contest on Mercury, too. But you know what they're going to say? What? Prove, prove it. it. On Mercury sure make big footprints. Nothing can live on Mercury, Ralphie. It's too hot and dry during the day. And according to my research, way below freezing at night. And day or night, there's no air, which makes it extremely difficult to breathe. Well, something had to make tracks this big. Something did, Ralphie, a meteorite. Meteorites are pieces of stone or iron that fall from space. Come along, class. If the ones that hit the planet are called meteorites, what do you call the ones that miss? What? Meteorites! 